ladies and gentlemen, boys and germs, as always, it's good to be back. We're live from Lancaster and Lytton, Pennsylvania. It's the 4th and 1 podcast. We're really glad to have you here. As always, Simi Schlicker and Captain Boring himself, Micaiah Schlicker. Uh, listen, if you didn't hear us last week, we made you some money. So go listen to us last week. Um, we got some really good locks in there. Make them bets and go. As always, you can find us at anchor.fm slash 4th and 1 podcast. And go follow us on Instagram for all your favorite clips and more stories, especially coming up at 4th and 1 podcast. Uh, Instagram, sorry, at 4th and 1 podcast. There we go. I stumbled through that. Um, Micaiah, I'm going to just jump right off the bat here with uh, I got an email from my father-in-law because apparently it's 2002 and we only communicate via email. Um, And he asked... If uh, the family, me being part of it, wanted to join a fantasy football league, I, of course, obliged immediately because someone has to destroy Cameron because he can't have all the fun. And uh, lo and behold, we get around to talk discussing rules, of course, over an email thread, which never goes well because, you know, everybody hits reply all. um, And that's an email joke. And uh, they don't like kickers. They don't like taking kickers, or they just don't like kickers in general? Yes. We are not going to have a kickerless league. The uh, It's not the team in family league, but the... Everything good there? Or the Dookie? Yeah I, I, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He's, like, dragging his face across the ground. Are you good, bro? Bro. Hey, Duke. <laughs> hey, Duke. Give us a You're moment, good? ladies and gentlemen, why uh, we make sure our mascot's well, okay. Well, Duke Duke thinks that that's pretty embarrassing that they don't like kickers. Yeah, and here's the reason they don't you. like kickers. Okay, so first of okay. all, kickers are people too. So you, I listen. My entire family just lost the point, and here's the reason that they don't like kickers is because kickers wait, can even wait, have. What's the point scale on? That's if the, they lost a point, that means they're <laughs> out of a point. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty big point scale. I mean, it's like, oh, okay. you know, right. you add it's and like subtract a points, and normally you're just adding points as you get to know somebody. You add points. It's a unofficial, um, it's an unofficial social point system. Call me China. Um, okay. And so, yeah, p- k- kickers wow. are people too. That's pretty racist, but Sorry, that correct. was my China comment. Um, <laughs> but correct. Um and I just wanted to bring that up to roast him a little bit because I think the the m- majesty of a kicker possibly putting you over the top is really what sets us apart from the animals. I think it's what's, uh, what sets you apart from literally every other sport. I mean, kickers are the only people, if you want to get really philosophical about it, where all the other people are running around, hitting things, catching things, and competing against their direct peer, like receiver has to compete against corner, quarterback competes against defensive line, offensive line, et cetera, et cetera, right? Everyone understands that concept. Kickers really are just competing against themselves. It's kind of like golf or bowling. <laughs> bowling. Uh, and I say this as a bronze medalist in the sta- in my work staff appreciation day that we had at our local bar here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, decades. Nice. And they had indoor, and we did a bowling tournament. Of course, I was the bronze medalist because that's how I do, baby. You like that? You like that? Excellent with the sound bite there. So, yeah, it is a little disturbing. And the team inside of the family, I used to think highly of them, and now they have just plummeted down. Plummet. I mean, fell off the side of a cliff. So that is a little disheartening. Here's the thing. is When I send them this and say, you guys need to watch the first, like, five minutes of this podcast, Yeah, they're going to be like, well, we didn't like him to begin with anyway, so we don't care. Well, here's the thing. I would say I didn't I don't like them i didn't like them anyway i don't even know them i mean i barely know your wife i mean you kind of know my wife i mean all i know is that i call her a bitch she thanks me for it 
She's genuinely, she's genuinely thanking me for calling her a bitch, which I find kind of disturbing with her upbringing, I guess, maybe. And then I move on. Well, so, so as a loving husband, we're going to just go ahead and leave that there <laughs> and go ahead and talk money, 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 money. It's right money, here. Please. The Big Ten has entered new contracts, uh, obviously, um, starting 2023. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I'm going off the top of the dome here, so Makai will correct me as he pulls up the article. So they had uh, part contract, half Fox, half uh, ESPN. Fox is their main media partner, so the Big Ten Network is a Fox Network sort of deal. Fox owns most of it is what I should say, and they're the ones who kind of produce and put it out. Um, that's staying put, so they their deal is good to go. The second half of that was basically all of their bloat games went to ESPN, ESPN2, and the ESPN um, metric of ESPN network, family of networks. Um, ESPN, more to that point, ESP, uh, ABC has been broadcasting Big Ten games since 1960. Which is basic, like... The reason, one of the reasons that the ESPN was around, besides Big East basketball, was basically yes, was basically. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Was basically the Big Ten and Big Ten football. You know, I'm generalizing because ESPN was pretty big when ABC bought them. Anyway, yep. um, so uh, f- CBS and NBC is getting into the game now picking up uh, both respectively playing about $335 million a piece for a 10-year contract um, for games to be able to put on, which is big news for NBC because, mind you, NBC had two three-hour time slots basically a week of football. And now they have a, they could put, f- fill a full afternoon and even evening possibly – of Big Ten football along with Notre Dame. Well, that's kind of their plan from what I'm reading is that they wanted to have it be... NBC wanted to have college football really mimic or Big Ten football really mimic what they do with the NFL, which is you have games, you have triple headers basically all during the day all during the day. So Fox would have the big noon kickoff, then that 3.30 time slot on CBS, and then you have the primetime game on NBC, and then Sunday night you have Sunday night football to kind of capture off. But so you said the money. So they are both paying CBS and NBC, and again, these are what will likely happen. This is beginning in 2024. No, I got the date wrong. Thanks for calling Clarifying. That, that's okay. 2024, both CBS and NBC are set to pay $350 million for their Big Ten packages, respectively. So do the math real quick. That's $700 million and million Money, dollars. Please. Sorry. Great. And then Fox is currently playing three hundred and uh, another $330 million. So we are at a billion dollars. That's the richest. T- that's the richest TV deal in college football. Nope, it's not. Did the did the nope. SEC renew their contract? E- so SEC la- in 2020 signed a 10 year deal starting in 2024. ESPN will be the exclusive broadcast uh, rights to SEC games as part of a 10 year agreement worth three billion dollars so to put that into perspective the premier league the biggest sporting um sorry the biggest sporting league in the world Mm -hmm. international rights hit five billion and uk rights hit five billion so basically alabama single-handedly made the SEC $3 billion. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so basically you're going to have ESPN, ABC. They will probably only have ACC games and SEC games. And then you between Fox, NBC, and CBS, you will have the Big Ten. 
So you're basically, again, this is all coming down to super conferences. Again, the big uh, uh, Fox will also have Big 12, and I'm sure there will be some Big 10 games on other networks. And if you have crossover divisions, depending on who's the home team, that you know, you might see if Ohio State plays Georgia or whatever, and Georgia's technically the home team because it'll be a, at a neutral site game because why are, aren't we playing in home environments anymore? I don't know. Y- that might be on ESPN or yeah. something like that. But listen, this is a – we talked about super conferences, and the TV networks are know that, and so they're tr- going to find their own super conferences. And the Big Ten is, I think – well known at this point for being hey, the Daddy. second best conference because top because top to bottom it is um, between Ohio State, Michigan. Whenever they decide to show up, Penn State, Michigan State, and Wisconsin. Those all those teams are better than most of the SEC on a year in year out basis. Now there are some years where the SEC is clearly better, but if you look around from a year into year out. More than likely or not, the averages are going to equal that the Big Ten top to bottom is better. I mistimed that. I thought you were ending sooner than... It, than ah, yeah, I know. I know. I thought also maybe you were telling me to shut up. No, I mean, fine, a little bit you know? of both. I it kind of, but I knew you were wrapping up. First of all, technical note, we need to get you a pop filter, bro, because your P's and your B's are just going everywhere. What's a pop, a pop filter? filter? You see this little nice little black thingy on top of my microphone? Not racist. Wow. That's pretty racist, but correct. We pause for laughs here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Is That's a pop filter. It basically breaks the air for, like, Bs and Ps. It breaks it so they don't... Wait, would it be that thing that, like... Yeah, that, that circle thing? Silver yeah, that circle round thing? thing? Yeah. If your wife has a pair okay. of pantyhose, you could use that. Just put it in front of your mouth, you know? Because your wife sees... Okay, well, that's a little person weird. ...person has pantyhose. Sure. I, but real yeah. quick, I do just want to mention that the that e, that the Big Ten did go to ESPN and say we'll yep. give you a seven year deal for three hundred eighty million dollars, and e, but it will be less marquee games. And ESPN's like, why yep. would we do that when we have the SEC for three billion dollars? It's a, so, it was a seven year eight hundred three hundred eighty million dollar contract, which, by the way, means that, I don't know if they were planning on going with another, like, with CBS or NBC on top of that, because... No, just, I think it was going to so be one they got or the more other. money. At the end... Sure, but the, but the networks aren't as sexy, you know? Like, like... Like, Tariko and Drew Brees, as I'm sure it will, well, maybe not because they're doing Sunday night football, but maybe, maybe they'll do both. Tariko and Drew Brees aren't as sexy or well-known in the college universe, let's say, as Chris Fowler and Kurt Herbst. Sure. Right? Like, those are the the cream of the crop. Me and Robert are both absolutely just devastated the fact that Kirk Herbstreit will probably not call another Michigan game unless if it has to do with the college football yeah. playoff. Starting I mean, in 2024. This kind of leads on. CBS is losing the SEC most likely, and now it's almost for sure going to just go over to ESPN. Do, do you know how much CBS was paying the SEC annually to... I know the answer if you don't. You don't have to look it up. Uh, for their prime, for the game of the week, and to uh, uh, air the national... The SEC championship? I don't, which is really sad. I know it was an older deal, so they kind of are getting a steal right now. It's $55 million yes. a year. I mean, absolutely. CBS currently is just stealing CBS. Yeah, $3 billion in 2024. So, yeah, they, they will make $300 million per year. And again, the Big Ten's contract... Is is a seven year agreement totaling thirty eight uh, three hundred and eighty million dollars? Oh, oh, okay, I'm I'm just processing. So ESPN getting rid of Big Ten, SEC, CBS, yep. probably either holding on to a little bit or leaving SEC games. Also, don't forget the two commentators for uh, CBS 
I don't know their names because Brad. It's it's Brad Nessler now because he left left ESPN about four years ago. I want to say and. Uh, I don't remember his name. Greg is something, okay. I think. I'm not going to look him up because I don't care that much. Very good commentators. Okay. Very solid I, commentators. I Very don't mean solid. to make fun of, you know, all hail Joel Klatt and, oh my gosh, what's the other guy's name? Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson. Very good commentators, but they're in third place to me. And also, how do you really? not... You you want to rank uh, the duos you, right now? Is yes, that what we're that doing? that is what we're doing. Okay. Okay, well, well then, um, so Gus Johnson and Joel Clatter Correct. are in third place for you. Who's number Kirk one? Kirk Street and Chris Fowler. Okay, okay, well, good. I don't margin, have to slap you over by that, but a how? Margin. Over, over who? Who's um, in second? Whoever the CBS guys are. Okay. Yes, I so, know. I don't know their <laughs> names, and they're ranked higher than the people of names I know. That's how good they are to me, though. You Dude, okay? Just it's. I can smell the leaves deteriorating, and the alcohol in my cup as I hear the band mm-hmm. na, 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 as they're like, and Bama's going up by seven, going into halftime. You know, like you can hear it as they're doing the the. I've seen. We've all know the exactly. Any college football fan knows exactly what I'm talking about right now. Slow motion of fans like cheering and throwing up there. Brad Nessler and Gary yeah, Danielson. They're great. So I, I so I think that the production value over at CBS is definitely better, probably, than Fox, just because, you know, they have the trumpets or whatever, and Fox basically just took their yeah. NFL music and yeah, put it to, to a, college, a college band, which which sounds awesome, but again, they're just kind of remixing. Um, I prefer Joe Klatt over D- Gary Danielson, but I do like Brad Nessler okay. over Gus Johnson. Now, let's make it very clear here. I'm sorry. I'm talking about full experience. If we're going sure. analytical okay. from an analytical yeah. perspective, yeah. No. Yeah. Joe Klatt is mut- is is the second best an analyst out there. I, I mean, it, it's one and one A between him. I mean, hey, what him and Herb Street do are think, very similar. The way they go about their games are very similar. But no, I mean, Herb Street definitely has the advantage and, for me. It's Herb to Street be fair, Fowler. we have to throw in, and I'm sorry, I don't do names well. This is just me in general. But we have to remember ESPN's B team, and they're also pretty good. I know they've been mixing it up a little bit. It's, and didn't uh, Mike Golick Jr. step into the booth a little bit too? Yeah, yeah, but he's like he's, he's like their down, senior D down team. On, on, oh, and he's much lower than that. Uh, yes, I know who you're talking. It's uh, Todd Blackledge and something else. Um, Guys, as you can as they, you can tell, yeah, great we podcasting. are absolutely fantastic. We just go off the dome. Listen. Why Micaiah is doing some Googling, um, we try to do the whole professional thing, mixing in with our professional lives, and we didn't like the mojo. And if you guys want to know, here's a little, for everybody who's made it this far, you're the, hold on, Sean, hold on, hold on. Sean McDonough. You're the true fans. So you just know, last week was our favorite episode in a very long time. And I know it wasn't the best quality for you guys. We're sorry. We're busy people. We'll try to do it in person. But um, we're really happy to do this, and that's kind of our vibe of we just go back and forth. Micaiah, thank you. Sorry. Who was the second person? Uh, it's it's Sean McDonough, and they are I, – I like Todd Blackledge a lot, and Sean McDonough is very, very nice. But listen, the thing that Brad Nestler has on all of these guys is Brad Nestler does the video game or did the video game. I don't know who they're going to get to do – the if video, they don't get the Chris Fowler, they will, they, will be very, they will I will be very disappointed. Will you riot? I won't riot. I'm not going to do it. Guys, here's the deal. We've oh. built this video game. Is it a riot if it's no. just one person? That's, that's just, just a crazy random? person. You had one job. Okay. Just the one. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> that's if just a you, crazy person. If you, uh, you guys have hyped this game up too much, it's going to suck. Compared to what we, the love that we have, it's like when they released the new Battlefront, and everybody loved the old Battlefront two. 
It's going to be apples to oranges. So fall in love with the game that they're giving uh, us, uh, uh, not the game that they you could have. is that NCAA was always easier than Madden, especially running the football. One way or another, there was always a run in the game that you could always run the football. I mean, you had 06, 07, you had the speed options. Uh, when it got later in the game, it was more of the read options and inside zone game. So you just just don't make it too hard, okay? That's that's all I'm saying. Like, you go and play college football for the ease of it. You go play Madden if you actually want to get, you know, popular at something. But yeah, no, uh, everyone's going to hate the new video game, which huh. is fine. So, which is sorry, fine. Mike Golick, you know just how you drop back on them. We were big fans of ESPN Radio mm-hmm. in the in the glory days, <clears throat> and they since yep. butchered it completely. But that's beside the point. M- Mike sure. Golick Senior is currently an analyst for Pro Football Talk and analysis for Westwood One's broadcast of Thursday Night Football. He's doing. He's doing football, radio football, radio broadcasts. Yeah. Did did you see him in the uh, Notre Dame unveiled their all white uniforms for oh, the Shamrock? The new Shamrock uniforms. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the? They did a hangover recreation no, of didn't. that. And the Golics were a part of it because they're the most. Currently, they're the most like famous. He's lost yeah. a ton he of weight. Dropped, dropped a ton. I'm seeing if I. Uh, but speaking of money, you know how I told out uh, how I told people I was really high on uh, Wake Forest, yeah. really high on Wake Forest, really high on Wake Forest. Did you see the news today about Sam Hartman? The quarterback? I didn't. Back out indefinitely with an uh, a non-football related injury. Yikes. Had surgery today. Some people are thinking it's probably just like an appy or something, but he's he's out indefinitely. So that puts a big damper in Florida State. Wait, Florida I don't know State what their or Wake Forest? Quarterback Who are we talking situation. about here? Okay. I'm sorry, Wake Forest. I meant Wake Forest said Florida State. Yeah, because, I mean, their over, they're over under is eight and a half. I bet the over on that. Washington State is five and a half, bet the over on that. Oh, I j- and then I bet Cincinnati. I forgot under the nine A wins, the AP course. poll was released. We should go over this real quick. Coaches, coaches. No, poll, no, Alabama, yeah, USA Today, coaches polled. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Hold on. But no, that, that no, that'll be the poll that they that ESPN uses week one, and everyone because the AP poll doesn't come out until after week one. So hey, okay, like, yeah, sorry, let's do the I, back. they always move rankings. AP. So we're on ESPN.com. Okay, so uh, all FBS 2022. Um, so that's copyrighted. Way to get us a copyright tag, okay? Um, Alabama number You're one. copyrighted. With 54 of the votes. I don't know what the 54. No problem with that. I've already said countless a number of times. I think they're going undefeated this year. Remember from Next. last week, you can see the clip on Instagram, 4th and 1 podcast. Alab- Nick Saban said last week last year that they were tanking. Um, they lost yep. one game that they Those probably were his could have won quotes. in a hostile environment. So, yeah, Alabama is, was tanking, so take the over and make some money. Uh, number two, Ohio State. Again, don't hate it. I think it will be their offense will mimic 2019 LSU, 2020 Alabama. I think there's a very good chance they only lose one game because Ohio State always loses a game that they should just win. Don't know what that game will be. I think they are the Big Ten. Uh, number three, Georgia. You're not big on Georgia. So You're not I just, big on them. I'm not. And I just, again, at 4th and 1 podcast on Instagram, go give us a follow. I did just post a video from last week's episode. I'm not huge on Georgia because of Stetson Bennett. And I know he won a natty. And I know that's everyone's knock on Georgia. And I know, and I know, and I know everyone's been doubting him. And they still don't. And the Georgia faithful still don't like him. Here's the problem. When Stetson Bennett turns the ball over, they're terrible. When Stetson Bennett doesn't turn the ball over, they're good because... He doesn't turn the ball over. It's like Cade McNamara with Michigan, right? 
Cade McNamara didn't win Michigan any games last year. The only game that you could say that Cade McNamara should have won Michigan was the Michigan State game, and that's when Michigan's defense forgot how to tackle a running back, okay? But what Cade McNamara, he just didn't lose the game. That's what Stetson Bennett's doing, and that's why in Michigan you have the quarterback competition, and that's why you should be having a quarterback competition at Georgia, You're not always going to have the most dominant defense if you're Georgia, and you're just coming off a year where you're historically one of the most dominant defenses ever. Yeah, I'm not big on that proposition you're giving Here's where, very succinct, good job. Uh, Here's here's what surprises me. Four and five, Clemson and Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm with you. Not so much on Notre Dame because Notre Dame kind of just – they didn't lose anyone, and they're still just as good with the same offensive coordinator, young head coach who who was their defensive coordinator. So all the pieces are still there, still big offensive line, probably one of the best in the country, good running back, unproven quarterback, and unproven at wide receiver. But I agree. You're going to take a team in the coaches' poll. Now, these are other coaches' uh, opinions of, of Notre Dame. You're going to take a team and rank them that high – with an unproven quarterback and head coach, again, I'm kind of with you. I think they're a top 10 squad just because of their roster, but three, mm. or I'm sorry, four. And then who? No, no, other way around. Was Clemson? Clemson was four. Notre Dame was five. Clemson's four. Notre Dame's five. Okay, well, either way, however you rank them, here's my problem with Clemson is you couldn't run the ball last year, so all of a sudden that's going to get fixed. Okay, I guess. Except you lost your offensive coordinator. You lost your defensive coordinator back to his alma alma mater in Oklahoma. Your defense probably is, yes, it's deeper. Uh, You have more depth, and it's probably more talented. I think it'll be the best defense in the country. But you're still not going to be able to run the ball, maybe. And your quarterback is unproven, except for those two games in 2020. Again, very succinct. I don't have anything wrong with it. Two things. First of all, I realize what the numbers after the name is. It's the percentage of number one votes they got. So Alabama got one with 54% oh, yeah. of the vote. Ohio State got 5% of the right. vote. And Georgia got 6% of the vote. And then Texas, all the way down at number 18. Th- those are the number of total So votes. there's a total There's a total of 66 votes. Total votes. 66 of who? Just 66 yeah. coaches? There's more than coaches. 66 teams. Yeah, I think so. Bro, I don't know how it works. They only rank the top 25. More, there's only 66. There's more than... Uh, you're asking? Okay. And I'll <sighs> tell you the same things I'm telling my employees. I'm giving you the, an answer. Whether you like the answer or not, I don't know. That's on you, bro. Okay. I mean, you could be right, but I have always said that they got 54 first place votes. That's what I read. So that means they got 54. Why they're only six, why are they only interviewing sixty six? Because maybe the other you there know there are sixty two vo- coaches oh, that goodness, vote in the poll. I, okay, so first of all, one of these for you because you're right. Um, but yeah. you're right. Twenty five mm-hmm. ranking for team. Maybe, but maybe all the other coaches just said no. We want two hundred dollars to take your little quiz. I don't, uh, I'll I'll read up on it. We'll go from there. Okay, so that was, Alabama a, shot. Got- that was a shot to all the NIL players <laughs> out there. <laughs> So Alabama got 54 of the votes. Ohio State got five. Georgia yes. got six. Texas at 15 got one. Mm-hmm. Sure. Kind of reminds me of that year that Michigan, they came off their best year under Brady Hoke. And um, I just had a mini seizure mm. there saying his name. And they they were ranked 8th and somebody gave them a first place vote and they went out and they played Alabama week 1 and just got absolutely shellacked shellacked okay so sorry i was just find that funny so mind you so cincinnati's ranked 22 um which i'm fine with i'm not fine uh old miss is below arkansas at 24 these are just a few uh kentucky Kentucky's a 21, Wisconsin's a 20, Wake Forest is 19. That's just weird to me. Pittsburgh is at 16, Miami's at 17. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, well, there's my first problem right there at 16. 
But Ty, are we we can go. Are we going to go back to the top ten? Yeah, I'm, go, I'm working. To, I'm kind of working just up eventually. Just the top ten. I have a comment on that, and I want to spend the most time there. Sure, sure. So sixteen at Pittsburgh. You're taking the best. You're taking Pittsburgh, who loses a four-year starter at quarterback, loses the defensive coordinator, loses the offensive coordinator, you loses the Belitnikov winner at wide receiver, and you're going to rank them 16? Okay. I mean, I guess. I mean, that's, to me, that's asinine. But but what's kind of weird with you? You made a comment about it being weird about Kentucky with Wake Hunts Forest, and all them. So why was just cause yeah? Why is that all weird? Kentucky had a good season last year, but they didn't have a. So did Arkansas, but like, I don't know. Like, why is Cincinnati not ranked fifteen? Well, because I, Cincinnati no, Cincinnati's sucks. in the American. We don't know how much of a college football. Okay, sure drop-off they're going to have. It's the same question with Michigan. Oh. Okay? Yeah. And Georgia. You, no. You, I, I agree. And, and and I'm just being... I'm kind of just being dramatic. But I get that they no, lost a lot of right. people. Don't worry. It I is, understand that. You don't... Right. The thing with Arkansas is the same with Kentucky. They're older teams. So, the problem with Arkansas like Arkansas was a really good team they started three and0 or four and0 I think they beat Texas and Texas A&;M but then they ran into Georgia Alabama and Old Miss and they lost three they started three and0 lost three straight and then kind of ran the table near at the end so they're older and Kentucky is also older and Kentucky's always been like an eight win program since uh mm-hmm. mark Stoops got there has always kind of been an eight win program and they're just a really good senior class away from being a 10 win 11 win and challenging for the sec east i think that's a really i'm not gonna challenge your and normally okay for the listeners who's like Simeon, you're doing horrible podcasting no because makai is right and i've just come to that conclusion so about college football mind you so Mm, yeah. Okay. USC is at 15. Do you think they should be higher because Michigan State's above them and NC State? No. I, I, okay. Well, again, everyone's really high on NC State. Where's my water? There it is. Everyone's really high on NC State. And NC State, I don't know if you – I think me and Robert talked about it. NC State just hasn't proven anything. But they've returned – and i got to find this. Michigan State, and I'll get into them as soon as you After you find it. your notes for NC State. NC, so he, here's the thing. NC State, four points combined their losses to Miami, Wake Forest, and they beat Clemson last year. So they had two losses last year by combined four points. They get 10 starters back on defense, so it's only one new starter. Their quarterback, Devin O'Leary, threw for 3,400 yards and 35 touchdowns. So that's what makes NC State attractive. My problem with NC State is they haven't been there before. They've never proven that they could be a top 15 team. USC ranked below or USC is at 15, NC State's at 13. So Michigan State's splitting them at 14. Okay, my problem with... USC is USC strictly at 15 based on the fact that Lincoln Riley took over, the fact that Caleb Williams, Mario Williams, and Travis Dye all came to town, along with a host of all other transfers. That's all fine and dandy, but start them off at least unranked because if they show up against San Jose State or their schedule is cupcake early, so they will probably make it up to the top 10 because they're probably their average margin of victory early on will probably be 21 points. So my guess is they'll go from 15. You get a couple upsets here and there. Michigan gets upset because they will be. Um, You get them into the top 10 and then their schedule gets tougher. You won't find out who USC is until it's too late. And then people are being like, well, see, USC was ranked too high. I'm telling you right now, USC is ranked too high to start. Michigan State is, too. Mel Tucker has never been a head coach anywhere long enough 
to develop his own recruiting class. So you don't know how he is, how kids respond to him. Yes, he brings in transfer, Kenneth Walker, Peyton Thorne, all these transfers, and he makes transfer work. He did that at Colorado as well for that one year here. But now you're expecting me to expect him to build a culture. I'm not saying... I'm going to judge the book by his cover, and I'm just... Him and Mark and uh, mm-hmm. his... Mark D'Antonio... I replaced think that's his name who yeah. he who was his predi- who was his predecessor they always had these mean mugs and their teams are all the same they're going to fight hard keep fighting you know never quit never whatever yeah eventually that starts wearing on kids okay and in this day and age of college football where kids can now go wherever they want you wear on a kid too much and he's gone and I'm not saying that he won't find a kid that will fit what his personality is but I'm saying that he hasn't proven that he can build a program, and you're just going to stick him at 15 because Kenneth Walker had a There's a lot of those teams on here. Season. Do you think Utah, Utah's too high ranked at eight? No. I think Utah should be the favorite and is the favorite to win the Pac-12. Their defense, they found something. They found themselves again last year. Next year, but now listen. I'm not saying uh, Utah will go 11 and one. They might lose two, three games, but I'm telling you that at the end of the year, they will be playing as good as. They got a the lot. Top of, teams if I'm remembering the, correctly, they have a ton of nation. returning talent. Uh, they start off the year with Florida, um, and also play the Fighting Brady Hoax. Um, so, so they they did lose their middle linebacker, of both safeties. They returned their starting quarterback and their starting running back. Um, but again, it's kind of that uh, their coach has set a culture and a culture that kids want to be with. Where it is, and his name's Kyle Winningham. It's be physical at the line of scrimmage and be <laughs> physical at the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You, you win the line of scrimmage, you win the game. And why that is true, his team really emanates that, and it's just like, just keep chugging. Just keep winning the line of scrimmage. You don't have to win it every play, but you have to win it a majority of the time. And yes, we will find out how good Utah is very, very early in their schedules, and I like that. I like teams that challenge themselves a little bit early and often in their schedules. Well, they really don't we'll have very anything. Quickly. They have UCLA at Week 8. And then they have Oregon. Sorry, on but I'm talking Florida. On October eighth, and then they have yeah. I know you you have Florida, and then you have kind of trash. No offense. Now again, as Michigan did that one year, like Michigan came out and just absolutely dominated yeah. Florida in that neutral site game, and then they kind of fell off a cliff because they had quarterback. That was the color rush uniforms. The road Yellow versus blue. Later that seat in Dallas. Yes. Which I was, yes, I was very happy about. But, so again, I'm not saying that that could happen, but at least you're getting a test early, and it can work for Florida too. If Florida goes out and just dominates Utah, you know how much of an amazing start that is besides dominating an an FCS East team? You know, some low-level Mountain West team? F. F oh, I see. Insane. To start the yeah, okay, 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 insane. okay, this is the issue that I have. So Texas A and M's at seven. Michigan's at six. I don't mind those. Um, I don't think. I think Michigan. I'm happy with Michigan at six. I'm happy with Texas A and M at seven. I personally don't like Clemson and Notre Dame at four and five. I, I don't know who you replace them with. Here's I agree. the issue that I have with this poll: nine, ten, and eleven. Going backwards, Oklahoma State, Baylor. Oklahoma. Why on God's green earth to not swear, Dad? That's for you and Mom. You also yelled at us a couple times. Is Oklahoma above the two teams who played in the the title game, and then as for Oklahoma, lost their head coach and basically all of their offense? And you have them ranked above Baylor and Oklahoma State. I have a problem with that. To all these coaches, to me, Oklahoma's like a twentieth ranked team right now. 
I'll respect you, but you got you're gonna have to show me you're gonna have to start off three and oh and go from there. I absolutely hundred percent agree with your Oklahoma take. I think Baylor Yeah, why are you ranking Oklahoma? You did lose now again, I think their defense will immediately improve. They had a good recruiting class despite kind of the shock and awe of Lincoln Riley leaving, Caleb Williams, Mario Williams. They had to bring in basically a whole new offense. They did get a good offensive coordinator from Old Miss. They did get uh, Dylan Gabriel from UCF. So there is some replacement, and it's not all terrible. You good, bro? Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, trying to swallow and nice. breathe uh, take and your talk time. at take the your same time. time. But you said Oklahoma, you have a problem with Oklahoma State. Where's uh, at 11? Oklahoma State at 11. I have a problem with Oklahoma State being at 11. That entire offense or entire defense was basically seniors and 50 year seniors. Okay, so but here's the I deal. Have it right you here. Can't, I know. You don't have to read it to me. I get what you're saying, and I, you and I both agree that Oklahoma State's going to drop off a cliff. The issue that I have is preseason polls mean nothing. So, in my opinion, the yeah, preseason sure. poll should be exactly where you finished last year. Then we'll watch you jump, drop off a cliff week one. We'll re-rank you after we see, see what you mean. You, you know what? I have always wondered why they don't do that. I have always wondered why don't you, wherever you finish in the AP the previous year, that's just where you start. And then it's basically a clean state because, like you said, these preseason polls mean very right. little, right? Like the fact that Michigan's ranked sixth tells you nothing. That basically tells you, because they do it from the coaches' poll, that coaches think that they have the sixth best roster coaching right. staff, et cetera, team, all-encompassing, in the country before they even play a single snap. Michigan fans will tell you that Michigan probably has about the 15th best team to at least start the season because you don't know what you're getting at quarterback. Yeah, you're getting a quarterback competition. You don't know who. You're replacing a 20-touchdown machine at running back. You're replacing two O-line members and you're – and a offensive and defensive coordinator, right? And I'm sure every single fan base can say that. I'm just a Michigan fan, so sure. I will talk about what I know best. But I have always wondered, why don't you just... It, it would mean the exact same. Old Miss starting the season at 7 or wherever they finished last year is the same as them starting right. at 19 because it doesn't mean anything. What it would mean for the networks is, and again, it's the exact same, is sure. more upsets probably. Because Perfect example if, would if be Oklahoma a State, right? you team like take Cincinnati. Right. Or Cincinnati. You finish in the top 10. You go out and you lose week two. It's, oh my gosh, Cincinnati. Blah, blah. Well, Cincinnati really wasn't that good to begin with. You know, Michigan goes and they're a 27 and a half point favorite. Everyone take Colorado State plus the points in week one against them. Michigan only wins by 10 points. Everyone's going to be like, oh, Michigan's not that good. Well, maybe Michigan is just as bad as that but everyone else yeah they I, were good. it doesn't really make sense to me i if you're gonna build this coach's poll also real quick sorry i just got burpee all of a sudden which is great for podcasts did you finally wash your water bottle well see that i did finally wash my water bottle um and it smells much better it tastes much better too the water's a little crisper a little cleaner i realized i was pretty disgusting oh Penn you're State's right top 25 and now I'm the coaches, the 66 coaches, thank you for doing the math, or how, 62, however many you said, 66. are going to make me do something I hate doing with a burning passion. <laughs> and that's defending Penn State football. Oh, my football. goodness. Okay. And I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Because Penn State's yeah. a top 25 program. At, if you have NC State on the list, the you have to have Again, Penn State on it. the list. They mean no I mean, who do they have at the bottom? Their bottom like, five their teams bottom are Wisconsin, teams. Kentucky, Cincinnati, which also, I get that they lost a bunch of people, but disrespectful. At least have them in the teens. 
and Arkansas, Ole Miss, and Houston. Other receiving votes. Okay, here we go. So other receiving votes. Oh, I didn't know Houston. Uh, I thought That's so a good too. call. So other receiving Houston votes. Them in the Iowa. Teams. Um, this is the number of points you get. So how you get ranked. Number of rankings are the number of points you get. The more points you get, higher you're up. So uh, Houston, um, Houston's at 257. Okay, just to put it out there. Uh, from 18 to 24, it's okay. in the 300 mark. So Iowa, 248. Penn State, 246. And then a giant drop-off at Tennessee at 163. So I don't have a problem with... Arkansas being ahead of Penn State because Arkansas actually beat Penn State in their bowl game pretty handedly. Every single Penn State fan knows Penn State's problem, and it's going to be their offensive line. It always is. Forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. Okay? If Penn State finally crawls out of their O-line deficient hole, however they got in there, and to figure out how to run the ball and protect Sean Clifford, the old man that's sitting back there because he's a six-year senior... <laughs> You're, you're going to be fine. But the fact that, I mean, I can't make an argument for them to be in over any of the teams from 20 to 25, but I can make the argument that Penn State should be ranked in the top 25 because they're going to have a good defense, they're going to have competent quarterback play, and that home crowd is amazing. And that's pretty uh, we much We got a shout out to the UTSA Yanni. Roadrunners who have... Uh, UT Austin um, week one. They got one vote. Respectable. All right. UTSA. Uh, yeah, you know, do, uh, go another undefeated season. That would be. They weren't undefeated. They lost one game. Awesome. Oh, and everyone. They weren't. They okay. had a good well, season. Almost they, had, they won their conference. Okay. You know how That's it what is. matters. And I saw a video on Instagram today. Speaking of UTSA. Doing a modified Oklahoma drill, three linemen up, three linemen down, um, and dear lord, do they look hungry? So listen, UTSA, I get it. UTSA, Texas, I get it. I don't think I think their game with Texas so, is going to be closer. They lost a fifth year senior at quarterback. I do know that. Um, UTSA, they get week three after they play Alabama. So depending on how mad they get after the Alabama loss. Um, We'll see. Um, so UTS, it is what? seventeen days what? until week zero today. So by the time people are hearing this, it is. I don't have a good sound. Days. <laughs> That's my excited. That's sound a great soundbite. Sound so yeah, but they look hungry. So expect UTSA probably. I'm looking at their. Uh, I'm trying to look at their conference here. We're giving you some really insight depth into the UTSA Roadrunners. Uh, SA stands for San Antonio. For those of you not high on the IQ scale, um, and <laughs> <Burn>! <laughs> okay, so they're in Conference USA. So they got Houston. They open up with Houston Week One. Should be a good game. Could be an upset. Probably won't be. One loss. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. Simeon's gonna break. Makaya broke down the rest of the conferences. Simeon's gonna break down UTSA because you know we gotta pad the time here somehow. Um, so versus at home against Houston, I'm gonna go loss probably seven points. Wait, they're ho- oh, Houston has to open against the season correct. on the road at UTSA. That's <laughs> that's like Penn State's athletic director saying that it's a shame that Penn State has to open up every Big Ten opponent until 2024 from 2016 <laughs> on the road when he's the one who scheduled it that um, way. They're at Army. Oh, that's a dub. Texas, I think that's another loss. Now, maybe. The, yeah. So can Houston Texas can go one of two ways. I mean, come on. It's... It, it's uh, I, I, actually I agree with that statement. Houston than I do Texas. 100%. I have no issue with that statement whatsoever because they're more consistent. Texas could they could flop right off the deck, you know? It, it could be. Um, Texas and Nebraska will probably have similar hmm. seasons. Hold on to that thought. Wait, hold on to that thought. Either they're at Texas under, Southern win, so they're okay, two and two. Right, right, right. 
Min, uh, Middle Tennessee W uh, three and two, Western Kentucky W four and two, FIU W five and two, Northern Texas W six and two, UBA UAB. I'm gonna give them the W. That could go either way. So that's seven and two, La Tech Rice UTEMP. Finishing the season 11, 10 and two, and that's really good for recruiting. That's all I'm saying, and really good for that coach. It's really good Could for that go coach. Nine and three. I don't know what their over under is. I'll look here in a second. But you were saying about Texas. You were comparing Texas to Nebraska, and I wanted to touch on that because they're both either going to have exceedingly under what. Exceedingly expected underwhelming seasons, or they're going to have better than expectation seasons. Now they could, and and those don't mean the same. Those both do not mean the college football playoff for Texas. That means college football playoff for Nebraska. That means a nine-win season, right? And or more than likely. Texas is going to finish 6 and 6 and Nebraska is going to finish 4 and 8. Sark's then going to be on the hot seat next year. People are going to be begging for him to get fired and uh, Scott Frost is actually going to be fired. But I I I think that there are just the two programs in the nation where The, they're going to have the same type of season. It, it's just it's just all panning out on paper. And if you watch college football long enough, you can kind of see the teams that are going to have these types of seasons. And Nebraska and Texas are in the exact same position. They can win now, and they can do great things, or they can do what they have been doing for the past better part of a decade uh, which UTSA is, is um seven and a half six and a half that's my guess oh. well then based on you and I'm pounding that over your assessment of them, um, take that over ladies and, and gentlemen I'm also pounding over Alabama's um ten and a half because yeah I think that's just smart money so just pacing that bet now after the verifies location yeah 20 cents done um, <laughs> yeah baby 20 cent um, okay well bro i don't do you have anything else because like i'm excited for college football but at this point like next week we're I'm gonna am, break down. We're gonna have some similar very, bets a lot for week one, probably because next the week after that is week week zero, right? We're 17 days so, today. You well, said. we are. So we're Correct. 17. So next week will be 10 days. Yeah. The following week will be three days. So that so with the three day mark. Yeah, well, we'll do the we'll week zero preview. We're probably zero going to preview. be. That's a all Saturday games. No, it's not. So we only have one more yeah, episode. Yeah, and here's the good news: the is we'll have we'll have actual and games. and then we'll, we'll have actual games. games. We decided that already. Oh, will we now? All of them. And in, in, wait, which week? We're gonna live stream the all first, of the weeks, yeah, the all first, of the games. The Saturday's first, my okay. Week. Hold up, my relaxing first of all, day. No, shut up, because you watch football from twelve to twelve, so you need to chill the f out. So, if I'm taking one of your I time don't, slots, and you which would be the twelve me. p.m. game to live stream, or let's say the three p.m. game. Or you want the late game and you want to live stream that one because you think that one would be fun. I'm trying to generate you content. Yeah. We'll talk off yeah. air. Um, okay, so know, ladies and gentlemen, we won't we'll be able to talk off air games, about that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just saying every week in and out. Like honestly, like. Saturday is my. I love sitting on my chair yeah, in my basement. All you're going to be doing nothing but college with football. With a headset for on, straight hours. To me, 
Right, but no, you I don't. I mean, you always and engage, I have to engage me anyway. You and well, we can't do oh, a week right. yeah, zero we first and foremost. No, we can't. And we can't do a week two. Wow. And okay. So, so and we're not doing it. Week here's one. what I'm hearing. Well, maybe. Well, Robert well, will be here. Well, but Robert cool. will be awesome. I'm glad Robert will be there. Robert will be I'll be here glad to hang one. out with him. So me and Robert all, could all live stream. Is, we don't I normally, need you as. Okay, but I That's normally she hit said. it hard and fast the first couple of weeks. Like I am watch. Yes, thank you. I'm watching game day. I'm watching all 12 hours of football that day. I am just hitting it on, hitting it on, making those blah blah blah. By the time that week five, yeah. six, seven, eight rolls around, I'm like, okay, do I really want to do this? Those are your prime weeks because that'll kind of keep me like engaged. And then week eight through twelve, it's like, yeah, college football playoff. You know, let's f and go. You know what I think you know? we do? So, um, um, what's that? I think we, we take play by week ear, like four. everything else. And we just kind of set up my computer and grab two microphones and just kind of workshop it. See what happens that day as we bounce around. Because there's going to be a lot of sure. logistics that go into it. And I'll have to design those and figure that out. This is the technical behind the scenes. Also, congratulations to uh, Pat McAfee. Um, we would love to call him a peer. He's way up the ladder compared to us. Um, I think he just struck a deal with Omaha Productions, which yeah, is sure, sure. Peyton Manning's production company. So he's going to be doing stuff with that because ESPN offered him game day. I think I think Fox offered him a, a, com they a really? commentator slot and did stuff. So everybody has been offering him things, and he took Omaha Productions. He took Peyton yeah. Manning's production company. And he's going to be doing some stuff. He has it on. So congratulations. You're seeing what? kind of podcast influence uh, influence the game. And that's kind of what we always want to do. And we're going to have fun. And one of the things that we love to do is everybody always comments on our energy. And we want to let them into the living room, you know, a little bit. And allow them to, you know, deal with us and watch a game with us and have fun and be a part of the living room without actually having to feed them food, which is huge. Sure, sure. Okay, well, you know what? This is definitely something, uh, yeah, we can uh, talk about. And uh, I, I'm not opposed to it. It's just well, you I thought were we just heard like, we're going to start week one. What's your uh, hot week? take like, for college sir? football this week? Just throwing this out, you, out at you. Oklahoma's going to actually be absolutely really love that good take. and make the college football playoff. I'm not sure about the college football playoff, but they're dead. Thank think you. I'd step it back. This isn't my hot take, but I'd step it back, win the Big, Te win the Big 12. Yeah, exactly. They're going to take yeah, over. They're going to win the Here's Big 10. Here's my hot take. Whoa! Hello. In a decade. Yep. NBC Universal will uh -huh. be leading the charge in college football. And NFL football coverage. Maybe we'll be working for them at that point. All righty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first on the 4th and 1 podcast. That has been another episode of the 4th and 1 podcast. I am Captain Boring. He is the host, Simeon Schlicker. And wash your hands, you filthy animals. We will see you next week. Days. Ten days away. Setting coverage. But for now, 17. Be 15 by the time animals. this comes out.